helpful um, open day so far so that you've learned kind of quite a bit about the college and what its aims are from the principal Gareth Collier through to all the different subjects and then of course you've probably met the wonderful Hayley Bendel who is our head of careers who's a very fantastic dynamic lady and um, is absolutely inspirational in helping students gain places at university so um so I think what we'll do is we'll we'll start now now, first of all, please do not hesitate to put any questions that you have in the chat box. Now, I know you've all been a little bit reticent so far, so you'll be very, very welcome because this is your moment. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the presentation and hope that I may answer quite a few of them for you. But if we haven't answered them at the end, both Miss Simmons, who is um, sitting to my left here, Melanie, if you'd like to give us a wave, that would be lovely. Um, she's our registrar here at Cardiff Sixth Form College and, um, and both she and I will be really happy to answer any questions that you have um, following this presentation and we'll certainly be following up with you all but the admissions email in case you need it is admissions at ccoex.com and uh, that will be appearing on my presentation and I will um, put it in the chat box for you as well. So, right, with more ado, let's go and I'm going to start sharing a screen. So let's hope that this is all going to work well. Right, okay. So first of all, um, my name is, is Henrietta Lightwood. And I am the Group Director of Marketing and Admissions at Cardiff Sixth Form College, which means that I kind of oversee all of the admissions and marketing functions here at the college. And we have three members of our admissions department, for instance, who are here to help you all of the time. And they are extremely helpful and, um, and will answer most questions that you will have. And also we have um, two members who are members of the marketing department who try and get out as much news and as much information as they can for people. So please don't hesitate to kind of look at things like our Facebook page our Instagram page and our Twitter page um, because they try and post lots of news stories and let you know exactly what is happening at Cardiff Sixth Form College. Right, what we're going to talk about today, first of all um, we're going to talk about really how you apply for a place at the college. I'm then going to talk about how you apply for a scholarship for instance and then we really kind of, so please put questions in the chat box. And then we're going to talk about really what the next steps are in terms of coming to Cardiff. Right. Well, the admissions procedure really is, is as follows. What you first off do is you fill out a registration form. And the registration form is available from our website. And we will also follow up with you and send you all a registration form in our kind of follow up email pack afterwards. And you return your registration form to admissions at ccoex.com with your school report, your passport and your birth certificate. And you pay £180, which is non-refundable, which is a registration fee, which is really an administration fee, which helps us with all the invigilation of all of the exams. We will then, after you've registered, get in touch with you and we'll arrange your entrance exam. And you take your entrance exam in a subject of your choice and it's any subject that you would like to study at A-level. So for instance, if you wanted to do maths, chemistry, physics and biology and your best subject was biology, take your entrance paper in biology. We want you to have the best chance possible of coming to study with us. If your subjects are English, history, German and French and French is really your best subject, make sure you take your entrance examination in French. You also have an online reasoning test, which is a, a GL assessment test, which um, you can do, um, which is really a bit like a kind of non-verbal reasoning test. And it's a, it's a general knowledge one a, and, and a multiple choice. And you reply um, on, on the boxes um, online. We will also give absolutely everybody who comes a Skype interview. And please don't be nervous about this. The whole point is we're trying to find out about you, what you want to do, how we can help you, and really what your career aspirations are going forward and what kinds of subjects you'd like to study at interview. Now, obviously, what we'll be doing this term is we'll be doing all of these online. And we've had quite a lot of practice 
obviously doing these um, in the past few months um, as we've had to put everything we've done online. So what we will do is the online reasoning test is a, is a computer test which can be done easily from the comfort of your own home. Um, and the entrance exam we will invigilate through Skype and the Skype and the interview again we will do by Skype. So please don't be worried if you can't move or you can't come through the college and mostly what we'll do is we'll do these on Saturdays and um, Ms Sims will um, invigilate those for you on a Saturday. So as soon as you've registered, um, please with your registration form, if you want to let us know which Saturday in the next few weeks would be suitable for you, we'll do our best to try and accommodate it. If you want to apply for a place, um, the other thing that is required is six A stars to GCSE, GCSE level. So what you do is that you have a, a, a kind of a, a kind of a, a place basically, and then you confirm your place on GCSE results day. And when you send us through your certificates, and we ask for your certificates by twelve o'clock noon, and then we'll write to you and confirm your place with us. So I do hope that's clear. So that's actually applying for a place at Cardiff Sixth Form College. Now, some of you may also want to apply for a scholarship. And um, we have a limited number of ships which are worth up to 100% of tuition fees. And we do also um, award some lesser scholarships of between 20 and 50% of fees. And just to give you an idea, the exact number, because it slightly changes every year, is determined by the strength of the applicants, because obviously some years we have kind of stronger year groups than others. Um, the size of the applicant pool, again, there's sometimes there's more people who apply for scholarships, obviously than less. The available places that we have in school, um, the appropriate level of funding. So each year we have an, 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 an element of funding that we're able to give scholarships away for and the academic focus in place at the time of the offer. So what that means primarily is that if we are particularly looking or, we, or we've particularly had, say, a lot of students who want to, who've already kind of applied, who want to do finance and economics, then probably maybe we're looking for more students who want to do humanities or medicine. So it just really depends. And we look at everybody completely together as a whole group. Um, to apply for a scholarship, you fill out a scholarship application form, which is in addition to your registration form. And obviously you pay the registration fee. Now, both forms, again, as I said, are downloadable from our website. If you go to the admissions section and look at apply and look at scholarships, um, the forms are there for you. And we will also, at the end of open day, at the beginning of next week, um, send you through both a scholarship form and a registration form in our follow up email for you. And again, with your scholarship and your registration form, you again return that with your school report, your passport and your birth certificate. And for a scholarship, you send through as well any other supporting evidence you have that you think will help enhance your scholarship application. So, for instance, if you are... Um, uh, are a grade eight cellist, for instance, um, and you think that will be a, be a helpful thing, please do send through your grade eight ABRSM certificate. If you have taken part in a national debating competition um, and, 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 and been given the kind of an award, please do send that through too. If you have taken part in a mathematical competition, anything you can think of that would actually help us look at you and have a kind of a wider view of you and what your talents actually are. You'll also be asked to write a letter of application, which really is for you, a chance for you to detail why you think you should be considered for a scholarship. I think you might have heard Mr Collier speak earlier about when we actually write um, personal statements going forward for university. Well, if you like, this is a first go at that. This is an idea at a time when you can actually sell yourself to us and tell us what you're really, really good at. So we really look forward to, to, to receiving those and to reading them. Um, if you're happy to be considered for a fee paying place, if you're unsuccessful in gaining a scholarship, also can you please detail this in your letter of application. However, please be assured this won't prejudice your scholarship in any way. All of our scholarships are based on merit and we look at everything, we've got many different criteria for scholarships, um, but we look at absolutely everything from your entrance tests um, through to your school reports, through to your entrance exams you do with us, through to your GCSE results. So we're looking really for the brightest possible students 
um, and it doesn't it, it, we, we don't look at people's means when we're actually deciding our scholarships but what it does mean is that we know therefore whether or not you'll be interested in having a place even if you don't have a scholarship so it's actually the other way around we will then get in touch with you to arrange a scholarship exam now the scholarship exams are different papers to our entrance exam papers and they are harder papers obviously because we're looking for bright students but again with the scholarship exam it's in a, the subject, subject of choice that you would like to study for a level um, just just on this which is the fourth point here if you decide you want to sit for both a place and then you also want to sit for a scholarship what i would recommend is that you do your scholarship exam in your best subject and you do your entrance exam in your second best subject because as i said the scholarship exams are harder than the entrance exams you'll also have an online reading test and you will also attend a scholarship interview and again a bit like the entrance exams we will be doing all of our scholarship exams again online this term Right, I wanted to just give you an idea because sometimes people ask, you know, how, how, what, what, what do you look for when you're looking for a scholarship applicant? What, what are your criteria? So we look, as I said before, we look at absolutely everything with our scholarship criteria. So we, we look at your entrance exams, so the marks you get in your entrance and scholarship exams. We look at the results you get in your online reasoning test. We look at the criteria when we're, when we're, when we're interviewing you, every, um, every application and every interview is, is graded and numbered and we, we, we take that into account too. We look at the application letter that you've written, we look at your school reports and we also look at your supporting evidence. So what we're looking at, if you like, is many different criteria and these are all listed when we're bringing everybody together for our, for our scholarships, so they're all the criteria. As a guide as well to a successful application, this is not definitive, but it gives you an idea about what we're looking for from the GCSEs, for instance. So we're looking really for generally the achievement of a minimum of nine A stars in your GCSE examinations. And they must obviously include the subjects that you want to study for A level. Apart from, there are some subjects such as economics or psychology or government and politics, for instance, for which generally people will not sit a GCSE examination. So we know what those are and we wouldn't be expecting, for instance, if you wanted to study those three subjects that necessarily, or psychology is another one, that you necessarily will have done those at GCSE. These subjects must be taken in one sitting and they need to be full GCSEs and not short courses. Now, just to kind of put that in context, now fewer A stars um, in eligible subjects or grades received in more than one setting could actually lead to either a lower value scholarship or no scholarship actually being awarded. And certain subjects are ineligible for inclusion and you're able to discuss these in more detail with, with Melanie um, when you start kind of looking at your application. But just to give you an idea, for instance, um, we're also looking at the careers in which you want, want to kind of go into and the university type of kind of um, subject choices you want to pursue. So for instance, um, if you have something like design technology as a GCSE and you want to do something like engineering, we'll be taking it into account. However, DT is much less of an academic subject, for instance, um, and so it's probably much less useful to something like um, someone who wants to pursue a career in law. Also, a bit like the university, so if you want to study medicine at university, we don't take into account um, many different types of maths at GCSE level. We just look at maths and further maths, for instance. So we, those are the, just the two subjects we wouldn't take into account the new maths numeracy, for instance, or additional maths. So there are certain ones, for instance, we're looking at really kind of at your core academic subjects. We do obviously take into account other qualifications you, you might do as well, like the Welsh back, but um, really that's the, the kind of the, the entire discretion of the college. They are not, then they don't count in the same way as, as, as your 9A stars at JCSE. And also we're looking um, at how you will contribute meaningfully to the life of the college and really be a worthy recipient of, of the award. Being a scholar is not just about um, uh, kind of you know, money or fees, if you like, it's also really you're expected to have some responsibility in um, leading other students in the college, to taking initiative, to um, help lead projects, 
to be very, very much involved. So please be aware it is also a responsibility um, as well as a bonus being a scholar here at Cardiff Sixth Form College. Right, what happens next? Well, what we're going to do next is we're going to send you a copy of our prospectus a registration form, um, bank details and a scholarship form to you all, which will um, happen um, in the next couple of days uh, next week, probably Monday, Tuesday time. If you haven't looked at our website yet, um, please do look at our website, which is www.ccoex.com. And particularly if you want to look at the admissions um, uh, section, which will kind of give you all the next steps for applying. And also do look at our social media channel if that makes sense as well, at CSFC Official, which is the um, media channel for Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Right, lovely. I'm going to stop there and then I'm going to actually see if there will be anyone who would like to take some questions. So let's have a look. All right, Oliver, if we have some GCSE results at the end of year 10, are we still able to apply for scholarship? The answer to that, um, Oliver, is absolutely, of course you are. They obviously would be looking really for nine A stars, ideally, at um, in, in one sitting, but not everybody always has them in one sitting, and some schools will take some early, and we will look at that as well. Um, the top universities intake of medicine students. Um, how many percent are from Cardiff compared to the state boarding? Um, right, Veronica, Cardiff has um, probably more medical students going to university. Well, I know it has probably more than about the top five schools in the UK put together. So this year, 33 of our students went on to study medicine. It's a real strength of the college, I would say. Um, Miss Bendel is absolutely excellent at advising people and helping them with specifically with um, their medical applications. Um, so yes, we send more students to medicine than, than, than any other school in the UK by, by quite a long way. Um, Arcana, what's the deadline for admission? Um, we don't have a deadline, um, we, 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 but actually I would, I would advise you to apply as soon as you can. Um, we're, we're already processing applications now for 2021 and at one point we do get full. So um, I would suggest um, you apply as, as soon as possible if you can. Um, for the application process, I posted the key documents, um, copies acceptable yes copies are acceptable that will be fine obviously we don't expect you to send your passport through to us a copy of your passport will be absolutely fine and exactly the same with your birth certificate um here i think i've answered the deadlines um stephen well we have to ask for predicted grades um no i do we don't ask for predicted grades because you've got to remember we already test you on one of our entrance exams and then actually we look for your um your actual gcse um certificates which will come at the end of august um what is an a star shabash on the one to nine grades an a star is um an a star is 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 an eight and a nine um, Shivash, so you're lucky you get both of them um so yeah so don't worry a star is eight and nine and Sammy, are we able to take an entrance exam on this subject? We've already achieved an A star in at the end of year 10. The subjects that you choose, Sammy, are absolutely up to you. You know, we, we put that definitely up to you because we want you to do the best you can and you know which subjects you're best at um, and the ones that you're passionate about and the ones that you really, really enjoy. They just must be the ones that you want to study at A level. And I, I suspect that quite a lot of you at the moment are in year, year 11 at the moment so you're probably looking at um, coming to Cardiff Sixth Form College in 2021 um, so you're in your second year or you've just started your second year of GCSEs if you're doing the GCSE syllabus which I, I suspect most of you are so you'll begin to understand which subjects it is that you really really like and possibly the ones that you're going to want to pursue so that's that's the most important thing um, Stephen, is there any practice papers or guidance provided for these entrance exams? What I suggest you do is that you go to the WJEC website and go and look at um, uh, the GCSE um, exams because we base our, our, our entrance papers on the WJEC um, exams. So do go and have a look at the syllabus there, um, definitely, and you'll be most welcome. And, and quite a lot of the subjects there will be, will be covered in the entrance exams. Um, are maths and further maths considered as separate subjects for scholarship and entrance exams? Um, 
Yes, you can take maths and further maths if you would like to. Um, but I would suspect I would suggest really what you do is actually try and present the best you can with maths and further maths. They're quite similar. So if you can take and you're strong in another subject, I would suggest that you do something like maths and chemistry instead. I think you'll have a it will be a, probably a stronger application. Um, for GCSE entrance, which subjects will be tested in the entrance exam? Very good question. For GCSE, um, you'll be tested in maths and English. Um, so if you want to kind of come for the GCSE course, um, maths and English are the two tests that you'll do, as well as an online reasoning test. And again, Melanie will be um, giving you an interview. Are AQA and WJEC quite similar? Um, yes and no. Um, you'll have to look at both of them for the, for the in-depth detail. But yes, um, I think if you've sat any exam board in the UK, you'd have a pretty good idea um, and be able to answer uh, you know, a, a fair amount of our entrance papers, but do compare the two and look at the course specification for AQA and for WJAC and for Edexcel or OCR or whichever exam board it is that you take and compare the course content on both of them. Um, um, so now, no, the entrance and scholarship exams can't be on the same subject, they need to be on two separate subjects. And is Spanish a strong subject for an entrance exam? Absolutely, Arcana, definitely. Spanish will be a great subject to come and sit, apart from it's not one that we teach at the college. So unfortunately, you can't take Spanish. We actually only teach French and German. So I'm, I apologise there, we, we wouldn't be doing Spanish. Um, are, would any sporting achievements help in the consideration for a scholarship? Well, well, Chico, I think your sporting achievements should be sent as part of your supporting information if you've if you've done something particularly particularly good in sport, um, because there's lots of skills, as Mr. Collier was saying earlier, which which do count in terms of your your teamwork and um, and the kind of focus that you have, for instance, and that that can be quite helpful. Um, Rhiannon, for science, do you need to know Unit One and Unit Two for the scholarship exam? Um, gosh, difficult question, Rihanna, and I don't know the detail of that, but I think you'll be absolutely fine. Most people are taking their entrance and scholarship exams this term, so you'll be in the same situation as absolutely everybody else. Um, I think there's elements of, of both in the scholarship exam, but I can't give you the percentages of it, I'm afraid. I'm sorry, I'd have to come back to you on that. If you want to email us, I'll try and give you a bit more of an answer. Um, Ash, is business studies a subject option? No, Ash, we don't teach business studies at A-level, we just teach economics um, because, um, because our students want to go to really, really top universities, economics is seen as a much more academic um, version than business studies, so um, I would suggest you look at economics, for instance, if you're aiming for a top university. Um, is German available in GCSE programme? Yes, it is, Beverly, but German is, and so is French. Is there a time limit while sitting in the scholarship exam? Yes, absolutely. The scholarship exams generally, I think, Melanie, you can probably tell me, it's about an hour, aren't they generally, most of the exams? Lovely, thank you. And what is the reason there are two separate exams for entrance and scholarship? Well, because you're sitting for different things. One is you're sitting for a place, which is the first stage of it. And the second thing is that you're sitting for a scholarship, which is the second stage. And we're testing different things for someone who wants to come for a place at Cardiff Sixth Form College than we are for someone who wants to be an academic scholar. Um, is religious studies an option for A-levels? No, we don't teach religious studies. I'm really sorry. Um, it's a very, very good subject and excellent, but I'm afraid we don't teach it here at Cardiff Sixth Form College. Um, which exam board is taught for German? It's WJEC. And are the entrance and scholarship tests GCSE level or more A level? Well, it depends on what level you're sitting um, for, Harshita. It, if you're sitting exams for to come for a GCSE place, they are English and Maths and they are a different level. If you're sitting for a place for A level, they're obviously more advanced and you'll be sitting um, a subject that you want to study. Good questions, everybody. Really good questions. Um, when do the exam lessons take place? Well, they take place as soon as you've registered. So, um, so I, I would, would recommend you register as, as soon if you'd like to come as, as, as you can. And Melanie will then be scheduling Saturdays from now till Christmas for people to come in and, and do their exams um, and, and for her to invigilate them actually at home, which will be the situation. Um, is DT an option for A-level? No, we don't. We only teach academic subjects here. We don't teach DT, Shivash. 
Um, if GCSE results are late due to COVID, how will this affect scholarships? Well, um, the interesting, that's a very interesting question, Christian, and, and the idea at the moment is the government is saying that the actual results won't be late, it will only be when people are taking it. Um, if they're late, of course, they'll be late for everybody, so no, it won't affect scholarships because we will wait for everybody's GCSE results before we actually award the scholarships. And well, all the scholarships will all be awarded within a day or two of GCSE results coming out, normally by the Friday, actually. We normally award all of our scholarships by four o'clock on the Friday. Um, is there a scholarship for one year GCSE? No, we don't have scholarships for GCSE. We only have scholarships for A-level. And when are the places offered? Um, by four o'clock, are kind of on the Friday after GCSE results day. Places, um, just straight places, are offered within, normally within about two weeks of you sitting your entrance exam. So that's slightly, it's slightly different. So if you're sitting for a place um, and you take your, your, your exams, we, we, offer you, um, we offer you a place quite quickly, but we confirm your place, we confirm after your GCSE results come out. So actually they all get confirmed after GCSE results day. So, I mean, how many scholarships would you normally award for each year? We normally offer around about 10 for 100% scholarships, and then we offer some um, partial scholarships on top. So I think that's probably answered it for both you and for the person who's talking to me from their iPad. So, um, so that, that, will be, that will be great. Um, is there any more questions that anyone can think of? Brilliant. What if we haven't finished the subject? course by the time we do the entrance well well no one actually ash will have finished their course because you won't finish your course until easter of next year so you'll be in exactly the same situation as everybody else that we know that you you haven't finished your gcse course so you'll be taking it at exactly at the same time what happens if a place is secured but six gcse's are not achieved well your place is only confirmed after your gcse results so you would need six A stars to get a place at Cardiff Sixth Form College. Anything else anyone can ask me? You're very welcome. Fantastic questions, really, really brilliant, um, which is great. And I'm glad you know, it, 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 you know, you've know you kind of engaged, which is great because we, we are looking obviously for, for engagement here quite a lot. So that's, that's really, really good news. Um, Thank you very much. Um, my colleague Reese now, I think, is going to just, you know, hopefully it will, it will work a bit better than, than the tour one did this morning, but it's just going to kind of give you a bit of an idea now if you would like to stay and uh, look at, have a quick look at what our boarding is like, even if you're not um, actually kind of um, coming to board. Sometimes it's quite interesting to come and see what the boarding houses are like. And then if you've got any further questions that you think of, um, please do not hesitate to email admissions at ccoex.com. And just to let you know, of course, um, we will be sending you out information kind of Monday, Tuesday next week. Um, just to kind of quickly finish, Chuka, yes, we include GCSE qualifications from any board. Um, and are there any religious aspects to the school? Um, we're, we're a non-denominational school, but we have, obviously, as you can imagine, um, students who come all over the world who have many different religions. And, you know, obviously people want to go to lots of different places and often do, and they're most welcome. So we're, we're very kind of tolerant of, of, of every religion here at Cardiff Sixth Form College. Um, Christian, some school reports are more conservative in terms of predictive grades. How much weight is given to this, please, in the application? Um, we look at, the whole person, Christian, we don't just look at school reports, it's part of the criteria for scholarships and it's very useful to have some background from other people and how they view you and of course we're, we're very aware that people write school reports completely differently and that they're all very very personal so um, we take them into account but it is certainly not the only criteria, far from it. Anything else anyone else would like to write? Um, Yes, the latest report, Arcana, is absolutely fine. It's just your latest report that you have. That would be that would be perfect. Fantastic. That looks like that's probably the end of, of, of most people's questions. Um, so please don't hesitate. Um, next steps: fill out your registration form. You know, it will all be sent to you on Monday and Tuesday. If you would fancy coming to Cardiff Sixth Form College. I would just, on behalf of the whole management team here, just like to thank you all very much for your time this morning and for, for bearing with it. It's, I'm so sorry we can't actually 
have you here at the college that's what we would like to be doing normally and having our pupils take you around and talk to you um it is a second best thing unfortunately like much of much of the stuff that's been happening recently but i do hope it's given you a bit of a flavor and um, we've got some wonderful staff here um really helpful really kind of all on track to try and help you achieve whatever your dreams are um, and so again if you have any further questions please don't hesitate to contact me and Mrs Simmons of course on, on the admissions email and we will do absolutely our best to help you. Thank you very much. Rhys if you want to play the boarding video now. Hello, I'm Mr. Thomas. I'm head of boarding at Cardiff Sixth Form College. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity to show you around our boarding houses and introduce you to some of our wonderful staff and students. Please enjoy. Hi, my name is Kat. I'm a house pair here at Cardiff Sixth Form College, and I'm going to take you on the tour of the boarding houses. The first house is Shand House. This is the closest house to the school, with about a three or four minute walk and is also home to both males and females. In Shand House, we have three different types of rooms. The first room is a cluster room. The cluster room has your bed, your desk and your wardrobe, as well as your own ensuite bathroom. In this room, there's plenty of space to study and of course, to make Shand your home. With cluster rooms, you share a kitchen with about five other students, but the rooms are good size, with plenty of space to cook, study, and of course, hang out with your friends. Secondly, we have twin rooms. The twin rooms can hold two students, as it has two bedrooms, a bathroom, and a kitchen. In the bedrooms, again, we have a bed, a wardrobe, and a desk, and the bathroom is shared between both students. In the kitchen, we have your kitchen surface and your oven, as well as a space to study and hang out with your flatmate or with your friends. And lastly, we have our studio rooms. The studio room has your bed, your desk and your wardrobe, as well as your kitchen area, and that's all in one room. And in that room, you also have your own ensuite bathroom. Now that we've covered all the rooms in Shand, we'll move on to what the boarding house has to offer otherwise. When you come into Shand House, you come straight into reception, where there's a member of staff available at all times. So when you come back from school, you can come and say hey. In the reception, you can also check your post box to see if you have any letters from home. And you also have access to the music rooms. So if you're a guitarist, a pianist, a cellist, this place for you to practice. Downstairs in Shant House, we have our common room. The common room is available to everybody and gives students an access for a place to study, but more importantly, it's a place to have a bit of fun. To relax, to spend time with your friends, and to not think about studying. As Shand House is near the centre of Cardiff, we do have a few security measures in place. The first is a coded door. The students get the code for the door and that will grant them access to the building. We also use a system called reach boarding. Now reach boarding allows us as staff to know if students are in town, are at school or in Shand House themselves. And as I mentioned, Shand House is home to both males and females. As this is the case, the floors are gendered and only girls can get to the girls' floors and boys to the boys' floors using their school ID card. And lastly, we have our laundry facilities. Once every two weeks, we wash the students' bedding, but when it comes to clothes and personal items, the students will wash these themselves and it's as easy as downloading the circuit laundry app or get your laundry card and using this with the machines. Now let's move to our second boarding house, Liberty Gardens. Liberty Gardens is slightly further away than Shand House from the school and it's about a five or ten minute walk. It is also home to both male and female students. The difference here is, is that female students are in one building and the male students are in a separate building. In Liberty Gardens there are two types of bedrooms. 
The first is a cluster room, and the second a studio. In the cluster room you have your bed, your desk and your storage space, as well as your own ensuite bathroom. Just as in the Shand House, the cluster room shares a kitchen with about five other students and that gives you plenty of space to cook, study and to hang out. Secondly, we have our studio rooms. This has your bed, your desk, your storage and your kitchen area all in the same room. As well as that, you also have your ensuite bathroom. In Liberty Gardens, the common room is in a separate building and the students can use this again to study if they'd like, but they can also use it to have a bit of fun and relax with their friends. Liberty Gardens is also near the centre of Cardiff and as this is the case, we also have security measures here. The first is the security gate where students can get access by using their key fob. Their key fob also gives them access to the common room, their bedroom and the building that they live in. And just like Shant House, we use reach boarding, allowing staff to know if the student is in the building, is in school or is in town. And lastly, we have the laundry facilities. Just like in Shant House, we wash the students' bedding once every two weeks, but when it comes to their clothes and personal items, they do have to do this themselves. And it's as easy as getting a laundry card, topping it up and using the machines that are provided. Now that I've shown you both of our boarding houses, I'm going to answer some frequently asked questions. The first is on the food here at Cardiff Sixth Form. All food is served in the school, in the canteen, and on weekdays, this is breakfast, lunch and dinner, and on weekends, it is brunch and dinner. If students want to cook for themselves, that's absolutely fine. They can use the kitchen they have access to. However, when it comes to pots and pans, we do not provide these. So if students want to cook, they will need to provide these themselves. The second question is on curfew. We do have curfews here at Cardiff Sixth Form, and all of this will be covered with the students during their first few days of induction with the boarding staff. Thirdly, we have a question on bedding. We do provide bedding for the students. This includes a duvet, pillows, sheets, and a duvet cover. And as I've mentioned, we wash these once every two weeks. If students want to bring their own duvet covers and sheets, that is absolutely fine. And we will also wash these on the bedding days. And lastly, medical staff. At Cardiff Sixth Form, we have a school nurse and matrons. They are available during the weekdays and every student is registered to an NHS doctor where they can go to the drop-in clinic and also make appointments. If a student is feeling unwell and is deemed not able to go to school, we also have medical rooms so that the students can stay in these throughout the day and to recover as quickly as possible. Now I've covered most of the questions we get frequently and I'm going to leave you to Mr Thomas to Say Hello, um, I hope you enjoyed the tour um, and if you have any additional questions please feel free to email at the um, address that is currently on the screen. Thank you very much, goodbye. Just while we, we finish, just to say thank you very much for coming. That's the end of open day. Um, really, really appreciate your time um, this morning. And I do hope it's been helpful and informative. Um, have a lovely rest of your weekend, um, despite the rain, which looks pretty awful here. But, uh, but hopefully, hopefully you'll have a, a nice time, nice relax. And um, we look forward to hear, hearing from you. Thank you very much. Goodbye.